This particular analysis is for the new syllabus HSC uh, for the text of Crucible, focusing on the human experience. In this particular analysis, I've attempted to move away from traditional views on the Crucible and really tried to make this one of a kind and certainly focused on the rubric within this new syllabus. Considered an allegory for 1950s American politics, Miller's Crucible depicts how a sense of hysteria brought change to individual society and the human psyche. In many ways, this is reminiscent of Puritan culture. The atmosphere, mood and themes of the text align with concepts of human experience. The text illuminates the nature of living in a restrictive society. The play was inspired by the Salem Witch Trials of the late, of the late 1600s during which over 20 men and women were hanged for alleged dealings in witchcraft. The consequences of living in such a restrictive manner are masterfully played out in the text, where one can envisage the impact of obscure community ideology on human motivation. Miller's Crucible portrays how living in theocratic seclusion can demonstrate the emotional fortitude of a community that is held hostage by those who possess the strongest will and perhaps to a greater extent by those who have the most to hide. Although Massachusetts is not truly secluded, the term seclusion may best, may best be understood metaphorically as restricted in thought or by highly regulated views about one's place in the world. To fully comprehend this, associated studies might be analysed. Dr. Robert Plutchik's Wheel of Emotion demonstrates that emotions are often paired, sometimes with direct opposites, or with, a sense, or with a sense of volatility. With this theory in mind, the intricacies of devious human cognition in the crucible are understood with relative ease. Furthermore, one can conclude that emotions are a type of energy or a force that manifests in the true nature of our existence. This challenges assumptions about our intrinsic identity. The most poignant concept of Plutchik's study reflected within Miller's clever depiction would be that emotions have immense ability to challenge and cajole our worldviews, including how we perceive people and the world around us. This aligns with the foundations of what we consider the human experience and its paradoxes and inconsistencies. On a more contemporary level, Miller's disenfranchisement with American politics at the time of the writing of the Crucible reflects his understanding of contemporary political mores. Of significance was Joseph McCarthy's unconventional method of finding perceived Soviet slash communist sympathizers from within the American political framework, later ascribed as McCarthyism. McCarthyism, colloquially the Red Square, sorry, the Red Scare involved a national hunt for, subs for suspected communist supporters, causing massive turmoil and delirium amongst many Americans. A wider adherence to such policy would not support progression in US political policy. Instead, it led to a regression in human and civil liberties. Miller's dramatic allegory responds to a socio-political paradox, the inconsistencies of fear and reason within the human condition. The intentions of the common module may be exemplified through the concept that paradoxes and inconsistencies are evident in the Salem witch trials and the ideology of McCarthyism, essentially creating increased collusion and smear detracts from one's own failings. In the example of Abigail Williams' character, the guilt of her affair with John Proctor is the precursor to her campaign of mistrust and and, sorry, her campaign of mistrust amongst those in her community. This campaign is built on her, on the belief of ideals in a world of absolutes, or the age old us versus them. This is a quote, ours is a divided empire in which certain ideas and emotions and actions are of God and their opposites are of Lucifer. A political party is equated with a moral right and opposition to it with diabolical malevolence, Arthur Miller. Existence within a society in which life challenges are dealt in absolutes is well orchestrated in Miller's text. 
this text, sorry, this particular argument and philosophically similar ones have become somewhat prevalent and commonplace in the literary realm. Contemporary characters such as Spock in Star Trek and Sith Star Wars Episode 3 likewise represent and convey substantial elements of absolute thinking. Literature, however, has progressed to a more poignant and relevant level in which such characters are not considered human. Indeed, one of the examples is the pure epitome of evil. Thus, the term human as the human experience with respect to the rubric in the New Stage syllabus now seems to ebb and flow with impetus. The most common component of the human psyche that has been toyed with over the past three decades in both film and written text is the concept of reason or rational thought. This in itself is a paradox because genuine rational thought is not within our cognitive capacity as human beings. This theory has been most aptly displayed in Martel's Life of Pi and Price, I, Robot. Therefore, responders to texts exploring the concepts like rational thought and absolute thinking must clearly comprehend the paradoxical nature of human experience and the inconsistencies that truly define us as perfect human beings. To quote Alexander Pope, to err is human. Thank you.